Okay, so now let's talk TLA. So that's pretty much what everybody knows. Everybody on TikTok talks about it, even on YouTube. People talk about TLA this, TLA that. So let's just really get into what TLA really is. Hey friends, and welcome back to my channel. I know this video is long overdue. I'm literally 34 weeks pregnant. I'm just trying to make it at this point. So please forgive me and please bear with me. But today I'm going to be addressing part two of the behind the scenes PCSing video that I made two weeks ago. Um, and this time I'm just going to be talking about the finances, um, all of the money that we wind up having to spend. And I will also talk about some of the money that we received back from having to spend a lot of money. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and get straight into the video. No, this is not going to be a story time. I'm literally just going to be breaking down numbers to you guys. So before I start doing a complete breakdown of the finances and the money that we wind up having to spend while we were PCSing, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this out there and say, if you are PCSing anywhere overseas, but more specifically Hawaii, because I've never been anywhere else, I highly, highly, highly recommend you at least at minimum have about $8,000 saved up. That sounds like a lot of money, but I'm going to tell you why. So in part one, I talked about how much money I spent on just shipping my personal car. So like I said in the last video, the military will only pay for one car to be shipped overseas the second car you will have to come out of pocket for. It. When I shipped my car, it was about $2,120, if I'm not mistaken. The first vehicle through the military, we literally didn't have to pay, like we didn't have to pay nothing. The only thing we had to pay for was like the car detailing and stuff like that. But <clears throat> if you plan on shipping two cars, I do recommend you save up about $2,200, but that's only if you are going to be going through a car shipment service or company that is going to offer you a really good price. Most car shipment companies, they are charging anywhere between $2,400, $2,700 just to ship your car. So that's also something else to think about. Um, you may want to save about $3,000 just to be on the safe side and then whatever else is left over, you can use that to put towards We don't else. have any pets, so we didn't have to worry about paying to ship a pet over here. But I heard, um, I had watched this girl's video on YouTube. I can't remember her name, but I'll link her video in the description box below. Her and her husband shipped their dog, and I think they flew through Alaskan Airlines, and I think she said they only paid like $150 to ship their dog, if I'm not mistaken. So I will link her video down below in the des description box if you do have a dog or animals that you are trying to ship over to Hawaii. You also want to make sure that your pets are like fully vaccinated and... Uh, it's it's a lot for pets to go get to Hawaii as well. So you wanna make sure that you have all of your paperwork together for your pets as well. So right off the bat, we wound up spending about $2,100 on just shipping my car. And that was before we even left the main room. Then when you do arrive on the island, you are going to need transportation. Now you can use Ubers and the military, well, the army will reimburse you your money for Ubers, but they will not reimburse you any money for rental cars. Now me and my husband, like I said in the last video, we want to be more comfortable than convenient. So we decided that we were going to go ahead and get a rental car because that would be what would be most comfortable for him and I, um, opposed to getting an Uber and driving down the street to the commissary to get snacks. So um, a rental car just worked best for us, especially because we wanted to go to Waikiki. We wanted to sightsee on the island and we didn't know how long it was gonna take for our cars to get here. So we just was like, you know what, let's just go ahead and get this rental car. Now, with that being said, our rental car was about $1,300. Um, and that's not including the deposit that you had to pay. 
And that is a hassle when you get on the island. So we initially tried to get a rental car through Alamo um, and they would not allow us to get the rental car because we did not have a credit card that would be able to like basically purchase the rental car for the entire week that we had it for, or we had it for two weeks. Girl, get it together. We had the rental car for three weeks, y'all. We weren't able to get that rental car because me and my husband, we have credit cards, but our credit card limit is not excessive. Like it's not over $500. So because we didn't have a credit card on file that we could use to purchase the full amount of the two weeks that we would be having the rental car, we couldn't purchase the rental car. So we decided to go to Enterprise because at Enterprise at the airport, they will allow you to use a debit card, but in order to use your debit card, you have to have proof that you have returning flight back to the mainland. So we wind up finessing and buying a ticket back to the mainland and getting the rental car and then we canceled that ticket the same exact day and got our money back from it so that way we could pay for our rental car because like i said we don't have a credit card but we did have the money to purchase the rental car they just weren't taking cash for some reason um, or debit cards so the only way that we were able to even purchase that rental car for two weeks with a debit card was by purchasing a returning flight back to the mainland and then canceling. So if you are in the same situation as us when you get here, I highly recommend you go ahead and you finesse it and you just buy a fake, um, you buy, not, not a fake ticket, but you buy a ticket, show them that you have proof that you're going back to the mainland on the day that you wanna return your rental car and then cancel the flight as soon as you get your rental car so you can get your money back 100% from the airline that you go through. So now I spent $2,100, so $2,120 on just shipping my car. And then we had to spend 13, about $1,300 on a rental car for two weeks. So now you're starting to see the money adds up really, really quick. When we arrived on the island and we got to our hotel, um, what they don't tell you is that TLA does not automatically kick in. You have to wait for TLA to kick in. You have to wait for them to give you your TLA in order for you to be able to pay for the hotel. So don't come to the island thinking that, oh, TLA is gonna kick in and I don't have to come out of pocket for anything because you are. So when we got to the island and we got to our hotel, they told us that we had to come out of pocket the first 10 days before TLA could kick in. So the first 10 days um, at that hotel was about $1,800. And that's because the rates were $155 a night. So because we were spend, spending about $155 a night for the first 10 days, that was about $1,800, including the deposit that we had to pay. So my husband came during a time where there were two four day weekends back to back. So the first one was like flag day or something like that. And then the second holiday was Juneteenth. No, it was Father's Day and Juneteenth. Those were the two holidays that they had two four day weekends on. So because my husband, he was supposed, he got, he was supposed to report to the island on June 10th, but he was not allowed to check in June 10th. He had to wait to check in on June 21st. So because we had to wait so long, we had to wait long for the TLA to kick in. So we wound up having to pay for the full 18 days of us staying at the hotel that we were at. Um, on the military base. So total, that came out to be about $2,800 that we had to come out of pocket for just for the 18 days that we stayed at the hotel on the military base. When we left the hotel on the military base, we still had no housing. So we had to wind up going to another hotel, which was off post. And we actually went to, it was closer to the airport. It was like actually right outside the airport. We stayed at this hotel called Airport Honolulu Hotel. 
I recommend you stay there before you try to go to the NS Schofield. But if you just want to, like I said, if you want to stay on post for the convenience, then go ahead. But I like the airport at Honolulu Hotel because they had like a little diner downstairs where you could go get food. They gave you like a $10, $10 voucher card for your food. You got free parking and it's downtown. So it's close to a lot of shopping areas. It's right next to the airport. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on the Uber. So, so it had like its own perks, but like I said, it's all up to you on whether or not you will choose convenience over comfortability. So staying at this new hotel, the airport at Honolulu, the rates at that hotel were $179 a night, but they wind up comping it to where it met the military rates. So it they wind up comp, it was only like $2. So military was only gonna cover $177. And so they wind up just taking those $2 off every night for us to stay there. And so because we had to stay there for about two weeks, we came out of pocket $2,800. So with the car shipment, which was $2,100, um, the rental car, which is $1,300, the first hotel that we stayed at for 18 days, which was $2,800. And then the second hotel that we stayed at, which was another $2,800, we came out of pocket a lot of money. And that's not including money we had to spend on washing our clothes while we were at the hotel, getting food while we were at the hotel, and putting gas in our rental car. So we spent a lot of money on just barely making it um, when we first got here. Now, now that I've covered everything that we had to come out of pocket for, I want to talk to you about the things that we got reimbursed for and the things that we would not get reimbursed for. So first on the list are the things that the military will give you your money back. So I have it written down here, but I also will have it on the screen for you to see as well. Shout out to my husband for taking this picture at his briefing when he first signed in. So yeah, let's just get to it. So the first thing that they will reimburse you your money for are going to be your taxis, which includes Ubers. So there's going to be this DLA form that your husband will need to fill out or you, whoever's in the military, you will need to fill out a DLA form or whatever. It's on a computer. My husband did it. I don't know. But I know it's on a computer. And in this DLA, you will literally tell the army all of the money that you had to come out of pocket for while you were arriving on the island and getting processed in and stuff like that. So this information that I'm giving you on the screen is gonna be the information that you put in on your DLA. The first thing that they will reimburse you for are your taxis and Ubers. Nobody really takes taxis anymore, we know. But your Ubers you will money back for your ubers but the thing is if your uber costs more than 75 dollars you will have to show them your receipt so 74 dollars and below you do not have to show a receipt 75 dollars and up you will have to show a receipt in order to get your money reimbursed another thing that you will get your money back from is when you're at the airport and you are um, checking in your bags. If you had to pay an extra fee for excess or overweight bags, the army will give you your money back for that. So I think I had to pay an extra $30 because we went, went over one bag. And so they reimbursed us that $30 that we had, to, that we went over on. Um, another thing that they will reimburse you for is your plane ticket. And you have to get your plane ticket before you even get there. And that will just, you have to purchase your plane ticket with your GTC. So basically the money that they give you back for your plane tickets from the DLA, you'll use that to pay off your GTC. Um, and then they'll also pay for your pet quarantine. And if you look at the picture, it literally tells you everything that you need to have 
together like all the paperwork and stuff like that that you need to have in order to get that money reimbursed for your pet quarantine so go ahead and screenshot this so you can keep this for whenever you get ready to pcs so now let's talk about the things that the money will not give you your money back for so the first thing is going to be a rental car. So like I said, we came out of pocket $1,300 for three weeks for a rental car. We did not get that $1,300 back. Now we were okay with not getting that $1,300 back just simply because like I said, we chose comfortability over convenience. Another thing that they will not give you your money back for is laundry. So like I said, we had to buy, we had to literally pay to wash our clothes in these hotels that we were in and they were not cheap. They were about like $4 to wash and then $4 to dry. And we had several loads. So um, they will not reimburse you your money for the laundry. They also will not reimburse you ATM fees they are not going to reimburse you for gas. So if you get a rental car, you have to pay for gas and they're not gonna give you any money for gas. They will not reimburse you money for food, but you will get money for T from TLA that covers foods. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. They're not gonna reimburse you for lodging more than 75 miles outside of your last duty station. So me and my husband, we came from Fort Bliss in El Paso, Texas. We stayed with my mom and dad who live in Dallas. That's more than 75 miles outside of our last duty station. So had we stayed at a hotel in Dallas, they would not be reimbursing us our money for staying at that hotel. That's why I said it's very important if you have family or friends that live close to where you're getting ready to ship your cars out of or you're about to fly out of to utilize them because you will have to use your GTC card. And when they give you your money back, you will have to come out of pocket for that portion. Um, they're also not going to reimburse you for baggage carts and you are gonna have a lot of stuff. So you're probably gonna need a baggage cart, but luckily at the airports, they're only about $6 for a baggage cart. And then they will also not reimburse you for toll. So if you are living in a state where it has toll roads, they will not give you your money back for that. So these are all the things that you need to take into consideration as well. These are extra expenses. I did not sit down and personally hand calculate how much money we spent for food and laundry and stuff like that. But I do know you do need to just save up like at least $500 for all of that if you plan on not getting a house for as long as we did not have a house for. Okay, so now let's talk TLA. So that's pretty much what everybody knows. Everybody on TikTok talks about it, even on YouTube. People talk about TLA this, TLA that. So let's just really get into what TLA really is. So TLA is going to be your temporary lodging allowance. Um, if I'm not mistaken, if I got it wrong, don't don't crucify me if I got it wrong, I'm sorry. But I'm, I'm assuming TLA stands for temporary lodging allowance. And so basically, this money is going to literally cover your um, hotel expenses as well as they give you an allowance for food. So depending on how many dependents your husband or you have, um, that's how much money you get back for food and for lodging as well. Um, I will post a picture of the rates for TLA right now and as of 2022. Um, me and my husband, it's just two of us right now. So our TLA um, gave us maximum $177 a day. And then they also gave us $148 um, a day for food for, for the both of us. So for every day that we stayed in the hotel, we got $148 just for food for the both of us. So, of course, we were going to get extra money back because we wound up coming out of pocket for all of the hotel that we spent, um, all of the money on the hotels that we stayed at. 
and we also had to pay for our food but we didn't spend too much money on food i don't know why like we just we just didn't but we didn't spend too much money on food so when we got our tla back our tla wound up coming out to be hold on let me do the math real quick okay so i have to go do some math really quick but i'm back so when we stayed at the hotel on the military base our rates were lower so on the military if you were staying on the military base your tla rates for room for your room and lodging would be 155 dollars a night max okay so because we stayed there the first 18 days at the ns go field um we spent about we spent about 2790 dollars so that's how much money we were getting back because that's how, how much money we spent then we stayed at the airport at honolulu hotel so because we were staying off post in a hotel that did not have a kitchen our max tla daily rate was 177 dollars a day so because we stayed there for 14 days we wound up coming out of pocket $2,478. Those two um, quotes that I just gave you did not include the deposit that we had to pay. Then, because we were in a hotel for about 32 days, we wind up getting an additional $148 for food each day. So that came out to be $4,737. So total, the 2,790, the 2,478 plus the 700, I mean, 4,737. That's how much total we got back from TLA. So that's our room and board. But then we had my husband filled out a DLA form. Now, I'm not going to act like I know what DLA, I know what it stands for, but I don't know how it works. But basically what DLA is, is dislocation allowance. So you have to go onto like this website, you have to fill out this form, basically telling the army how much money you came out of pocket. Um, they give you rates based off of your dependents as well. And then you get money back from that. It's like a one-time flat payment of whatever you filled out on your DLA form. So we wind up getting the DLA before we got the TLA. So um, we got most of we got most of our money back. I'm not even gonna lie, but we had to spend money in order to get our money back plus more. It's kind of one of those situations where you have to pay to play. So. We had to come out of pocket a lot of money, but we wound up getting that money back plus more after everything was all said and done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that it was very informative. It's not, it's really not easy when you're transitioning and changing from one duty station to the next, especially when you have to come out of pocket so much money, y'all, like so much money. But I hope that you gained some information and some knowledge from this video about how much money to save up, how much money to you plan on spending, as well as how much money you plan on getting back based off of the information that I received during our process of PCSing here to Hawaii. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. My husband will be the one to respond just because he knows all the information. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video.